Hey guys, if you're planning to or are interested in applying multiple products to your lawn in a single application and you have any kind of question about compatibility on whether or not the pro products will mix together successfully and safely, the best thing you can do is perform a jar test. And on almost every label uh, of these particular products, you will find instructions for mixing. And this particular example is an excerpt from the Bifin IT label. Uh, first, you wanna add wettable powders to the tank water, mix well, add liquids and flowables, mix well, add emulsifiable concentrates, and then mix well. So always read the label first uh, before you begin mixing products because you will find instructions on a prescribed order of adding each product to the mix. Uh, in this particular case, uh, I am targeting app rates here as follows. I'm applying Bifin IT at one ounce per gallon, propiconazone at two ounces per gallon, and humic acid at six ounces per gallon. So a total of nine ounces of product in a one gallon, 128 ounce mixture. Now for the purposes of the jar test, I don't wanna mix a gallon obviously, because you potentially could waste product and uh, there's really no need to do that. So what I've done was I assumed a 32 ounce total mixture or quart and just divided each of my app rates by four since there are four quarts in one gallon. So now I have a bifin rate of 0.25 ounces, propiconazole of 0.5 ounces and humic acid 1.5 ounces totaling 2.25 ounces of product mixture, and then a little under 30 ounces of water would give me a 32 ounce mix. So I've gone ahead and actually broken out each one of those uh, reduced rates for a 32 ounce jar here. So I have 1.5 ounces of humic acid. This is my 0.25 ounces of Bifin IT, and here is one half ounce of my propiconazole. So the first thing you wanna do is add at least half the amount of water to your jar. Uh, you don't wanna start from nothing and just start adding chemicals and add your water at the end. Just like you would be mixing in your particular tank, for my case, it'll be a backpack sprayer, a four gallon backpack sprayer. You wanna fill your tank at least half with water, half, three quarter full, before you add, start adding any kind of product. So the first thing I'm gonna be adding, and I'm just following the instructions that are prescribed on the label, is the humic acid. The humic acid I'm using is a humic acid 12% liquid concentrate that I uh, mixed together from a powder. And I did do a video on that previously, so I'll put a link to that in the description below. So we'll go ahead and add our humic acid. Turn it up. Okay. The next instruction is to add liquids and flowables, and then that would be followed by emulsifiable concentrates. Now I know the propiconazole because it says right on the label that this is an emulsifiable concentrate. 1.3 pounds of active ingredient. So I'm gonna do this last. Uh, I'm not sure if the Bifin IT itself is an emulsifiable concentrate. I couldn't find literature on that. But even if it was, the two would be going in essentially at the end, right? So let me go ahead and add my Bifin IT. And what we're looking for are just any kind of reactions of the mix that would impact your ability to spray the product. Any kind of uh, clumping or glum, uh, gumming up, anything like that, because you wanna identify those issues first before you apply them to your tank and start trying to spray them because then you're gonna clog your whole system up. So I've added the Bifin IT and I'm gonna to continue to mix that for a little bit. As 
So far, it looks okay. Okay, so finally I'm gonna add the propiconazole to my solution. And we'll mix that well. Go ahead and screw the cap on my jar. Whoop, before I do that, I've got to add some water, right? Almost forgot. That little bit of foaming you're seeing on the surface is not atypical for. Uh, I should say it's typical for the humic acid to have some foaming action going on, even when the humic, uh, humic acid is used by itself. All right, now I'll put my, whoops, got to be careful. Screw my cap on. We'll agitate that a little bit. Make sure we get a nice thorough mixture. Wear gloves when you're doing this kind of stuff. Uh, proper PPE is, is extremely important when you're working with these type of chemicals. For the example, or for the reason I have here, is I just spilt a good bit of it, or not a good bit, but a small enough amount to where you don't want to be getting that on your hands. Okay, so that's been, that's been agitated. From what I can see, everything looks good. It looks like all these, these three items will actually mix well together. What I'll do is I'll let this sit for a little while and then I'll check back just to make sure something hasn't happened if there were some reaction that would happen over a period of time, which I don't think there will be. I think if there was an issue with mixing these three, uh, we would see that pretty quickly. Um, so we'll let that sit and then we'll just check back in a little bit and see what we got. Okay, so here we are several minutes later and it looks just as it did uh, after I first mixed it. Now I can't speak to whether or not there's separation happening in this jar just because that humic acid makes such a dark solution. I'm, it's, I'm unable to see that. At least I don't see anything here at face value. Um, but uh, when you read these labels, they'll encourage you to use the mix uh, within short time after mixing. You don't want to mix this stuff together and let it sit and allow for any kind of separation or anything like that. So I think as long as you mix it well into the tank and in the tank uh, and then maybe some shakes or agitation while it's being used, then you'll be just fine. But uh, ultimately, I think we have a good compatibility match between these three items. This propiconazole 14.3, uh, humic acid 12%, Concentrate and Bifen IT. Again, thank you guys for watching. Take care.